Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here in this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful drawing community. In this video, we are going to learn how to format a Procreate file for a printed greeting cards. And then in the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how to draw beautiful daffodils if you want to make a Mother's Day greeting card. Now, I've also included a little freebie which is linked in the description below I'm personally not really super good at calligraphy, so I thought it might be nice to give you guys a PNG of the text Happy Mother's Day written really nicely so you don't have to worry about writing it yourself. <laughs> so if you want to check that out, it is linked in the description below. Again, it is totally free. And with that said, let's get started. So for this project, I'm going to be working in a canvas that is the size of a regular letter paper. So 8.5 inches by 11 inches. Here I need dimensions in pixel if you want to create your own canvas, that is what you need to do. And if you want to learn a little bit more about canvas size, how to choose um, and understand resolution and all of those things, I have a video which will be linked in the description below. It can be very helpful. And if like me, you are working in a pre-textured file, so a Procreate file that was already made by someone else, you can always go in the wrench icon menu here in the canvas and select crop and resize. And if you go in the setting option here at the right, you will be able to input the dimensions in pixels so that you have the same canvas as we are going to be using here in this tutorial. And before we start drawing, we need to find the center of our canvas. So where the fold will be. Now I find to do that there is a very easy way. So go ahead and just create a new layer and with any brush that you want, just go and draw a vertical line. And if you hold your pencil on screen, it's going to create a perfect line. You're then going to select the arrow tool here at the top and enable snapping. So now whenever you move your line, you're going to see little guides show up, including this yellow guide that shows you the middle. So that's a really easy way of finding the center of your canvas. So we're just going to rename this layer to fold or center or whatever is <laughs> going to remind you what it is. And then swiping it toward the left, oops, <laughs> swiping it towards the left, we're going to lock it just to make sure that we don't move it um, accidentally. So obviously you could write whatever you want on this card, but like I was mentioning in the intro, I made a PNG image that you can download, it is linked in the description below, with the Happy Mother's Day text. Um, <laughs> I personally really struggle with calligraphy, so I thought it would be a nice thing to just give this image to you <laughs> if you are also someone who struggles with calligraphy. So once you've downloaded it on your iPad in your picture, you can just go here in the wrench icon menu, click add, then insert a photo, which will open your camera roll and then you can just click on the picture and it's going to import the text right in your Procreate file and you can just then move it around. And I made it as a PNG, so with a transparent background. And what that means is you can change the color of the text very easily. So you can just pick something in your color picker and then drag in it over the letter. And you might have to adjust the threshold. So moving your pencil towards the left or the right is going to allow you to fill in one letter or all the letters. In my case, I'm probably just going to go with black, but you don't have to make that decision uh, right now. I just wanted to show you how to import everything so you had an idea of what you were working with. So I recommend that you rename this layer to text and with that we'll be ready to start drawing. So go ahead and create a new layer, put it below everything, so below the fold and rename this one to sketch. So this sketch we're going to do something very quick, very loose, so don't worry about being precise here at all, it is not necessary. If you like, you might want to change the blending mode of the sketch to multiply, that is not essential but that's just something that I personally like to do. And you can pick whichever color you want to use for your sketch. So I'm going with a gray color. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to be using my watercolor brushes, which will be linked in the description below, along with a promo code just for the YouTube people, as usual. But if you don't have them, don't worry, I'm going to be suggesting other brushes from Procreate. So for the sketch, you could use either the coloring pencil from the watercolor brushes or the HB pencil that comes in the free sketching brushes uh, from Procreate. So no matter the brush you're using, we're all going to start by creating a elliptical shape <laughs> that's going to basically just be where the general 
flower is going to be. And then in the center of that, we're going to mark the bottom part of the trumpet. And then we're going to add another ellipse, which is going to be the top of the trumpet. We're then going to connect them both. And that's going to create this really nice cone shape that is really typical of daffodils. Another thing that is very typical of daffodils is they are usually, uh, like the petals come in groups of three. So you're gonna see here in the example, there are kind of two layers of petals and on each layer there are three petals. So that's what we're going to sketch here. And to do that, I really like to draw a curved line that kind of show the uh, orientation or like the angle of the petal. So uh, splitting the oval in a half first and then in each half drawing two other lines which is going to give us six petals total. And we're going to start by drawing the petals on the first layer. So the shape is fairly rounded and then it ends out being a little bit more pointy at the top. And the petals almost touch each other at their widest point. So you're going to draw one petal, then you're going to skip one guideline, draw a petal on the other one, then skip another guideline, and draw your third petal for your first layer. And again, don't worry about being too precise here, you just want to have an idea of where everything is going to be. So once you have your first layer of three petals, go ahead and fill in the second layer, which should be pretty easy because you're just pretty much filling in the gaps. And at this point we have the really rough shape of the flower. And for the stem, I like drawing it in two sections. So the first one just comes out like straight out of the flower. And then there's this kind of joint circle uh, thing and then it bends and you have the other part of the stem. So this elbow shape is also a very typical thing of daffodil flowers. And another very typical things of daffodil flowers <laughs> is the shape of the leaves. So you can see there's this very tall, thin, uh, round ended leaves. And all of those little elements coming together are going to make in the end your daffodil flower look like a daffodil flower. Even though something might not be perfect, just combining them all is going to really help. So here I'm just cleaning the sketch really, really quickly. You don't have to do that, but I just want to make sure that in the tutorial what you see that I'm doing actually makes sense. But you really don't have to do that in your own project. Again, it's just for clarity here in this tutorial. Once you have your sketch, we're going to lower the opacity of the layer until we can just barely see it. Again, you can have it on multiply if you want, it's not essential, it's just something that I like to have. You're then going to create another layer, put it below the sketch layer, and this one we're going to rename it to flower. <laughs> so on this layer, we're obviously going to be drawing the flower, and here you can use really so many different colors. Daffodils comes in a ton of different colors. My mom's favorite color would be a white daffodil, which here in French we would call une narcisse. I'm not exactly sure what it is in English because daffodil is such a big family of flowers, but anyway, I'm diverging here. Um, so yeah, I would love to draw a white one, but I'm just so scared of filming and drawing white things that in the end it's not going to show up on the screen. So I'm just going to be painting a yellow daffodil here, but you could go with a white one if you want. So if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor. Otherwise, you can use in the airbrushing panel the hard brush and you can then lower the opacity of the brush. So lowering the opacity of the hard brush is going to allow you to have some overlap uh, and overlay effect as you can see here. You're not going to get any of the watercolor texture, but it is still better than nothing. It's still going to allow you to do something that kind of look like watercolor. If you do have the watercolor brushes though, obviously go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor. And we're going to start by just filling in our petals one by one. Here you don't want to lift your pencil too much because every time you lift your pencil, since we have some transparency in the brushes, we're basically kind of resetting the color and it's going to create overlays. And we're going to use those overlays to advantage layer, layer, later. <laughs> but for now, we're trying to draw the petals one by one without lifting the pencil. And once you have all your petals, we're just going to do the same thing but with the trumpet part. And the trumpet part is really nice if you had some little ruffles, so just like a wavy shape uh, and the opening. And I like to draw in two sections. So this first section here that is kind of the outside of the trumpet, just coloring that in as we did for the petals. But then kind of the inside part of the trumpet that we see, I like to leave some little, like a white gap. Um, kind of towards where the center 
of the trumpet is. So as you can see here, there's just like, I don't fully connect the two. And later when we blend that in, it's just going to add a lot of uh, dimension and so much more life to our flower. So the next thing we have to do is to color in the stem and the leaves. So for that, you can go with a nice vibrant green. You could go with whatever you want, but I mean, green <laughs> seems to be the obvious pick here. So nothing more complicated than that we've been doing so far with the same brush. You're just going to fill in your sketch uh, very roughly. And you can see here, I'm not even being super precise. I'm not really following the lines of my sketch at all. I'm just basically using it as a general guide. And at this point, we don't really need this uh, guide <laughs> at all. Basically, we already have sketched everything or filled in all the color, I should say. So we can just go ahead and hide the sketch layer by now. So the next step is we're going to add some more color variation and a little bit of shadow. So go back to your original color that you used for the flower and make it a slightly a little bit darker. Now for this, you can either use in the airbrushing panel, the medium brush or medium hard brush, I should say, sorry, and lower opacity as well. Or if you have the watercolor brushes, just go ahead and pick the basic watercolor so that your edges blend in a little bit better. And here we're going to really roughly map out some color blocks. So we're not trying to do something beautiful here. We just want to add a little bit more dimension in the flower. So since we have overlays, it's already going to kind of blend into colors a little bit, but we're really gonna go in later with an actual smudge tool or the water blender and make everything look nice. So for now, just go ahead and map out your colors. And what I personally like to do is shade the kind of bottom layer of the petals. So the three petals are on the second layer and then add a little bit of shade on the center of the petal that are on the top layer. I also like to add shade at the top of the trumpet and that's pretty much it honestly. You can see here I went really, really quickly. Now you can go and do this step as many times as you want, changing the color ever so slightly every single time so you have a little bit more color variation and just more depth in your illustration in general. So here I'm going with a slightly more of an orange color. And guys, if you watch this far in the video, please go ahead and comment the word flower. I know it sounds crazy, but it gives me a lot of insight in how to pace my videos better, which in turn helps me create better tutorials for you guys. And it's also really cool because you guys know me, but I have no idea who you are. So whenever you comment, I get to see your name, sometimes even your picture. And that's just so much fun to see the nice drawing community that we're building here on this channel. So go ahead and comment the word flower and we'll keep going. So you could really do this step of adding blocks of colors and changing the color ever so slightly as much as you want. I'm gonna stop here because I mean this is, <laughs> this is a tutorial and I don't want the video to last for like three hours but yeah you can do it as many times with as many different colors as you want on the petals and then you're just going to do the same thing on the stem and on the leaves but for the stems and the leaves you can just do it like two or three times and it's gonna be more than enough and at this point we're gonna go in and blend in everything so that it doesn't look as crazy as it does right now so you can either use the smudge tool setting it to the soft brush or if you have the watercolor brushes go ahead and pick the water blender as your paintbrush tool so not a smudge tool just a regular like paintbrush and i mean <laughs> There's nothing crazy here. We're really just going to be blending in all the weird digital edges that we created so that it looks like nice watercolor. And now when I say we're blending in all the digital edges, we want to make sure that we still have some edges so that the different parts of the flower kind of contrast with each other. So what you're going to do is basically you're going to blend in the each side, each side, inside <laughs> of each individual petal. There we go. I don't know why I struggle with saying that, but um, yeah, you're just going to blend in the inside of the petals, making sure that the outside edges are still crisp. So you can see here in my example, this shouldn't take too long. Obviously this is a bit sped up, but you know, <laughs> you don't have to know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this really helps with the watercolor feel of the piece. And it's just a really nice way of kind of adding more color variation and shadows without it taking too much time. Um, so yeah, definitely would recommend this technique. 
Another really quick and easy way to add some color variation is to use the selection tool, set it to freehand, and draw a wobbly shape for your selection. So for this step, I'm going to start by just selecting in the top left part of my flower, and then you're going to feather your selection around 20 to 30%, somewhere in that range. Then using the hue saturation and brightness, apply it to the entire layer, so that is in the adjustment panel. You can lift up the brightness and maybe lower the saturation a little bit, and that's going to give you the effect of having some light shining like on the top of your flower. You can do this step as many times as you want. I like to do it a few times. So again, selection tool, set it to freehand. This time I'm going to draw a wobbly shape in the bottom part of my flower. Again, feathering it somewhere between 20 and 30%. And using hue, saturation, and brightness this time, I'm going to create a shadow. So you might want to play with the hue a little bit. You're definitely going to want to lower the brightness and you might want to play with saturation a little bit here. So there's no perfect recipe, you don't have to use the same numbers as I did, but just go ahead and use this technique to add random colors. You can see here I'm even going in with like the most random shape ever, feathering it in and going back with the hue, saturation, brightness menu. And this time I'm just shifting the hue. So that's a really nice way, like I was saying, of adding random color variations in your piece to kind of mimic watercolor a little bit more. So once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer. So on this layer, we're going to add a little bit more detail. And this step I know might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it makes a big difference. So you're gonna change the blending mode of this layer to Linear Burn, and it is renamed to Details, by the way. And you're going to use kind of a sandy gray color, <laughs> as well as the same pencil, or same brush, I should say, that you use for your sketch at first. And what I personally like to do, and what I recommend you do as well, is go in and kind of create the illusion of a cleaner sketch. So the sketch that we did at first to map out where everything was going to be um, in our artwork was really rough and quick. But now that we have the actual shape and the color, you can go in and kind of put some emphasis on some parts of, of the drawing by adding these like sketchy lines. So I don't think you should necessarily think of it as kind of outlines or like line art because it's not like black cartoonish lines. It's just kind of reinforcing like I was saying some parts of the drawing mostly when some parts of the flower is kind of overlapping another part. So I like to just add a little line where there is two petals overlapping or here you can see in the trumpet you can also add a little bit of texture so just little lines that kind of connect the bottom part to the top. So that is really, like I was saying, an optional step if you want something that just feels like watercolor and is really soft and doesn't have any clear lines in it, just skip the step. But otherwise, that's a really nice way of adding some details and a little bit more life and texture to your piece. You can even use this technique to add a little bit of uh, like cross-hatching shadows, which really helps to give this like traditional botanical illustration feel to the piece, which is definitely a look um, that I personally quite like, but again, if that's not your cup of tea, you can totally skip this. One thing that I do recommend you do, however, is to add a little bit more detail to the trumpet part of the flower. So for that, I like to create a separate layer just so we don't have the linear burn effect applied to it. And this layer you can rename to extra, but we're basically just going to be drawing the stamen. And for that, you're going to pick pretty much like a brownish type of color that is still a little bit gray and you're gonna stick with the same brush that we've been using and you're gonna draw little lines with little ovals at the end. So little details like this I find are so fun because it takes two seconds to do but it transforms the piece completely as you can see. And another fun element that you can add would be splatters. So for that, I like to create a new layer, renaming it to splatter, and we're gonna change the blending mode of this layer to linear burn as well, just so that the splatters that we draw kind of blend in with the color of the flower, just like regular splatters would be blending in with regular watercolor. So for that, you can go back and pick your original yellow. And for the brush, you can go in the spray paint menu and use the splatter brush, which I don't know why they called it splatter brush. It doesn't even look like splatters. Or this gicle brush, which looks a little bit more spl like splatters, but is very, very dense. But if you have the watercolor brushes, obviously pick the splatter brush. It is 
made for that. <laughs> and I think it just looks really much more natural than the regular Procreate brushes. But again, if you don't have the watercolor brush, these alternatives should work for you as well. So here, use your own judgment to splatter some sprinkles, no, to sprinkle some splatters <laughs> over your piece to make it just a little bit more interesting overall. I know I keep saying that, but it's all in the little details. So here I'm just going to draw one flower because again, otherwise the tutorial would last forever, but you could draw as many as you want. And once you have your flowers, you can go back and put your text layer wherever you want. I like to put it below the flowers and then lower the opacity a little bit so it blends in, but that's totally a personal preference. And at this point, you might want to group your layers by swapping them towards the right and then clicking on the group option at the top of the layer panel. So we just have a few little things left to do here if we want to print this card. So go back on your fold layer and we're going to unlock it this time. So swapping it towards the left again and tapping on unlock. And you're going to set your color to black and then we're going to fill in this area on the left. So you might have to adjust the threshold, but you can do that by moving your pencil towards the right or the left, depending on what you need. And then I know it sounds crazy, but we're going to go back and fill in this color with white. So as you can see now, we have a rectangle that covers the entire left half of our paper. So since we're printing this, I personally don't really like having the paper texture show on the white part. So a little trick for that is if you have a pre-textured file, you can just open the layers and make sure that all the layers of blending mode of them are set to color burn. So that way you're not gonna have any texture show up on the white, it's only going to show up on the color. As you can see here, you still have some watercolor texture, but just in the actual drawing itself. So in general, that looks a little bit weird, but since we're printing on paper, it would kind of be weird to have like double paper textures. <laughs> So at this point, all you have left to do is export your image, print it, and give it to your mom. So there you go. This was how to create a nice Mother's Day greeting card, or honestly, you could use it for so many different things. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And I would love to see why you guys create. So make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you soon.